Well, alrighty then. I hope you guys want to join me on another adventure. As you can see here, I got a couple of purple boxes and in them are a pair of Penzi transfer diesels. I've got the powered and the hard to find dummy. And I've owned the powered unit before and I sold it off years ago, um, just before COVID, one of the last Yorks before the whole COVID thing. And um, typical for a train guy, I buy something, pay too much for it, put a bunch of work into it and then sell it too cheap only to turn around years later, see it again at an irresistible price and then buy it again. So that's where we're at right now. I've got some parts for it already and some memories of the old one. I am going to convert it to TMCC so I can run it on my layout. And of course it's going to get installed, uh, Katie's and, um, fixed pilots. So we'll get into it. I'll probably talk about some of my memories of working on the, uh, the original one I had a few years ago. All right, so it's got some pre-weathering. Oh, look at that, you can see right through the stack. So the dummy units are true dummies. There is nothing in there at all. No pickup rollers or anything. And uh, when I picked this up at York, I thought, oh, one of these number boards was totally missing. And I thought, oh, I have to print one, but I did find it. Now, I got to go and review some of the photos I have, some of the books I have, um, because I know they didn't have these dynamic brake setups here. So I'm going to investigate the removal of those. And I, I know most of the photos I had don't show the train phone antenna nor the inductors on there, but I do like the look of that, so I'm going to keep it. Um, I don't know if I'll get these to 100% prototypical correctness, but I don't know if I'm going to worry about it. So I think the uh, first thing I'll do is investigate if I can remove the dynamic brake assemblies and fill whatever hole they're plugging, if, if they are plugging something I can't remember. I don't have too many photos of my upgrade effort and um, I'll probably have to go dig up my old OGR thread on, on the one I did years ago. Um, so as you can see, I have a lot of work to do with the, the pilots and all that. I'm still on the fence as to whether I'm just going to do anything with this, with this unit. If I'm going to do the uh, non-powered unit or what. Um, I thought originally it might have been nice to have two units going just to have two sound systems because, you know, the prototype has, uh, two, um, prime movers in there and I'll be right back. I'm going to get this out. But here's our powered unit. I do like the color MTH used on there. Pennsylvania models. So you can see there's some minor touch-up needed. And uh, I believe this was Proto 2 with a 5-volt board. Um, you see they're using their old kind of Fisher-Price looking cab figures. <laughs> and uh, compared to this one, I don't know if this came out later. That's their later version cab figures, I think. I'm not like super big MTH expert. I've got, you know, a few MTH things on the layout, quite a bit of rolling stock. Maybe I'll swap the cab figures. I like these a little better. One memory I had from my set was that it really could have used um, four pickup rollers and these blind trailing wheels on this power truck here. Uh, they didn't really like going um, through the curves on my layout. Something was going on with these. They're very floppy. They would, they would flop around and find themselves on the inside of uh, my curves. And 
from what I remember, it made stuff hop around. You can see how much slop they have in there. So with mine, I ended up, the one I did before, I ended up buying um, like a Williams power truck from one of their F7s or whatever. And I bought some of their uh, flanged wheels out of them and uh, put some flanged wheels in here. And uh, I think I put like a styrene pad in this little rectangular depression there just to hold the axle down. Uh, I'm going to try to do something a little nicer this time around. I do have some photos of my three rail scale effort on this. And I think I, I ended up just mounting the pilots hard to the uh, frame. Um, but I had to cut off that big chunk of die cast there that connects it to the power truck. Um, I'm going to, now that I have a 3D printer, I think I can make something nicer. And I may try to keep these safety stripes. I didn't keep them on the other engine. Um, and if I'm really ambitious, I might try to do some full handrails. I don't know. Um, I think it might be a challenge here because this is stepped in a little ways. You can see. I'll have to see. I, I guess one option is to just completely print new pilots. I don't know if I want to go that far. We will see. Just doing a quick Google search on this engine for photos. Um, the Wikipedia page for the Lima transfer diesel shows the inductor coils, but it doesn't show a train phone antenna, which is kind of interesting. Quite the imposing pair of engines here. For those unaware, um, these had dual prime movers. I don't think MTH ever modeled that sound with their Proto 2 sounds. Um, and I don't think Lionel has ever m modeled uh, dual prime mover sounds outside of their um, Union Pacific Veranda engine. And then that was, you know, a diesel donkey motor and then a turbine. So they didn't do like dual diesel prime movers. So in my research, Stouffer's Penzi Power 2 and 3 had some more info on these guys. And also some uh, poking around on the internet. And I discovered that these are the LS25Ms. These would have been the last pure Lima built diesels. And I think the last things Lima ever built on their own before merging with, with Baldwin. Um, so this set of engines, uh, MTH got them pretty close. There, there were quite a few. Um, I mean, not, I mean, maybe like a handful with dynamic braking. However, I don't think they're as bulky as what MTH modeled here. I want to say they were a little more low profile. Um, to remove them, though, I, I don't know. I'm still on the fence about that. I, I do want to keep the antenna on both units. And I can justify using both of these MU'd because I did find some photos um, in my in my Stouffer's uh, Pensy Power books. Um, curiously, there was a couple of these MU'd together and they were about ready to uh, couple up to a Baldwin version of these guys, which is slightly different beast, uh, same concept. So yeah, quite a few variations on these things. One, one thing I've kind of discovered over the years, especially with the diesel stuff, there seem to be a lot more variations than you'd realize on them. And I think they changed uh, quite a bit more quickly versus steam locomotives. Um, so, I mean, I found different combinations of these little walkways o over these vents, these cooling vents. Um, again, if the uh, dynamic braking grids are gone, these horns were moved a little closer to the cab. There also seems to be different combination of battery boxes on these guys too. So, but you know, if I left them as, as they were, you know, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't bug me a whole lot. Um, the, the cool thing was that I discovered that these did get MU'd once in a while. Now, the other thing 
that being said, um, these don't have any details for the MU connections. Uh, I'm not really too wound up about that. Um, I don't know if that was added later on. These did run till like the late 60s. So, I don't know. I could go either way on a lot of the stuff. So, at this point, though, I've got some time to decide. I'm going to do some disassembly on these in the meantime. I'm trying to also decide how much work I really want to put into these units. Um, the pilots uh, are kind of interesting. Um, I could fully 3D print a new pilot or just make 3D printed adapters for these. They are a little narrower than they should be um, as far as this, but you know, let's just see, see what I, uh, see what I get into. Um, I'm sure I'll have some uh, memories triggered as I work on the, uh, the powered unit, especially some more. I do plan on removing all the, the PS2 stuff, the smoke units. Um, luckily, these don't look like they were smoked very hard if they were smoked at all, so that's really cool. That's the problem I had with the other ones. I had smoke fluid oozing out of all of the cracks and crevices long after I weathered them, so. All right, so here's a real rough FDM print of my potential pilot replacement. This is just to get the vertical height to see if I got the stair spacing even close to where they need to be. So you can see once I pull the supports out of here, it'll kind of look like the back of this, I hope. All right, so what's going on here is I'm trying to decide which way I want to go on these pilots. And um, a couple options for building up a whole pilot to replace the original or maybe just making a spacer. So... These are just printed on my Creality. The idea is eventually to get these detailed out and done on the resin printer. Um, but right now I'm just doing some dimensional checks and just a general overall experiment. So as you can see, this is the evolution here. I really just wanted to test print this part just to see if I was anywhere close to the stair spacing. Um, the coupler... Uh, pocket was way off on this was too high and then i did then i realized um if i wanted to do this this way i had to create a depression um because i was thinking about mounting it to the uh frame here and this is actually so far the latest one where i even have a little dip in here to kind of clear this assembly so i am trying to keep some of the original parts um, but this is basically what it would sort of look like. I thought that was kind of, kind of elegant. If I could just get a couple mounting screws through there, I could keep a lot of this intact. Um, I won't have to cut off like the coupler mount. The other way is to just simply make an adapter, um, just to kind of bolt this up. I'd probably have to cut these tabs off like I did on my other ls25 and um that means there's no going back but at the same time i get to reuse the grab irons and the lift bar and then once the mount is done i can come up with a kd box so i don't know um also saves me the trouble of trying to figure out how to make this part here which i'm, I'm sure i could do but it wouldn't be pretty for the first few shots so, I don't know. Right now, I'm kind of trying to decide what to do. You can see I got the prints a little better each time. Like I said, this is just to prove the uh, dimensions. If I want to go this route, it would eventually get printed on the, uh, the Mars Pro in resin. Hmm. One nice benefit of printing up all new pilots, though... Um, these are full width where the MTH swinging ones are, are a bit narrower. I think this ends up like 63 and change, almost 64 millimeters wide. 
These are like 58 millimeters wide for some reason. Um, so I don't know, I'm on the fence. I mean, I think this way is a lot easier. I, I still got to cut and drill. This uh, full pilot replacement is just drilling and mounting versus cutting, drilling and mounting. So I, I don't know, I'm kind of going back and forth. Um, right now. So I'm printing up a spacer right now to try seeing if I'd like this method of just utilizing the old pilot. So now yeah, we'll see. All right, let's see what we got. Very promising. All right, so this print here, I kind of did it the standard resolution, so it's like 0.05 millimeter per layer. And as you can see, I've got it kind of on a X, Y angle here so that the layer lines aren't, aren't as obvious, but also the supports kind of propagate themselves. I, I don't even think I added any supports manually to this. Um, just let it fly. So let's crack this off here and uh, put it into the final cure and see what see what it looks like. See if my details have maintained. So here's the supports left on the platen. And um, I just pushed out the ones that were automatically propagated in here, just, just with my thumb, you know, and then the whole thing just cracked off with no problem. I've got this sort of look under here. Let's give it a final cure and see what this this looks like what I really wanted to do was maintain the details I put on the front of this. You see the rivets that I popped out. I tried to follow what MTH did. Um, one thing I have trouble with on these resin prints is making these square holes. See, I lost some definition on the top of this. Uh, draft gear hole here, so uh, I don't know. See what happens when I uh, do the final cure. Trippy, huh? Wow. So here's our pilot progress. You can see here's the uh, factory MTH, which was designed to Go for a ride with the truck, you know, there's the mounting holes and here's a nice generous hole for the uh, three rail coupler to go through. And here was an initial thought. This is kind of the classic way of doing a three rail scale on a diesel. You just make some adapters, right? You know, and I've made some in the past out of just some scrap stirring or whatever and leaves something to be desired. So here's a couple iterations of just figuring out a, an adapter piece. One that was just adapting the height and one that kind of worked on the uh, original sheet metal frames. You can see this depression is sort of an alignment feature. So then I thought, why not print the whole one? Um, so you can see this is uh, at least a full scale width of the platform. I think the prototype is like uh, maybe just a couple inches narrower than this uh, model. So started off with this. You can see, you know, this was just a test shot on the FDM Creality printer just to see if I've got the uh, stair spacing correct. You know, I had to play around with that a little bit. And here's another one where I figured out where I needed the uh, 
kind of the step down to uh, fit inside the frame. Started adding features, which, you know, wouldn't resolve very well on the uh, FDM printer. Here's another one where I went a little further. Um, I got these little bump outs here. And then there's a slight depression on the front to clear this sheet metal. Um, like I said, what I'm trying to do is, is keep as much of this front end um, original, I guess. And then uh, here's another one where in the Tinkercad I started adding more details. And I finally figured out how to do this plow in uh, thin layers in uh, Tinkercad. So that was just a test shot. You can see the holes I put in there for the cut lever, eye bolts and stuff. And then here's what I hope is the final resin prints. Not perfect, could be a little cleaner. Um, just by virtue of changing the uh, print angle a little bit, maybe adding some more supports, you know, so I don't get features like this. But I think that top um, surface there might get covered by the KD coupler box. You see, I just want, got one kind of fit in there right now. But you can see I've got some of the de details rendered in there. And um, I've got the plow closer to what I think it really looked like in real life, just based on photos and stuff. Um, the MTH one was very wide. And from all the photos I was looking at, the uh, little plow there was kind of really close to the width of the uh, draft gear box. So, um, so we're going to see. I'm going to try to clean this up best I can. Uh, maybe on the next print, I'll go for a higher resolution print with uh, more supports or a different angle. But I think... I think I've got this on the run, kind of. Um, so, this was kind of the uh, kind of the idea that it would fit under there like that. So, what I have learned from doing this stuff is, I think I've got a little bit more of a healthy respect for what our three rail manufacturers have been doing over the years you know trying to come up with something reasonably close to the scale model with some compromises so that you can actually enjoy the operation of these models on your train layout you know so i've learned a lot about doing the uh, cad stuff i would not profess to being like an expert in it but I am learning a lot and, and honestly just having a blast. So um, the idea with this print too is to kind of stay within the spirit of this model. You know, kind of to almost follow along what MTH did here years ago. When they came up with this, you know, swinging pilot. That's, you know, kind of reasonably true to uh, real life. You know, just a bit narrow. Um... So anyway, I'm going to try to mount these up and see what I think. You know, I'm going to use this dummy engine as, as the uh, test bed. So, oh, kind of cool. All right, here's what I think will be the final pilot assembly. I had to correct the uh, box height. I sweetened these little details too. I bumped them out 0.2 millimeter. Also... I fixed the uh, width of this landing pad here for the coupler box. It didn't interfere with my screw holes, through holes. I would say that's a pretty good fit up. Um, I also am able to kind of set the, uh, the draft on it set this you know draft gear so that i can clear this little plow the uh mth plow uh, by the way was like i said pretty heavily stylized it was quite a bit wider not sure if it stuck out further but i did have trouble with my other 
um, upgrade job on these in the past where I had to cut the trip pin off the Katie. Now I think I can leave it. So not too bad. Um, I think I'm gonna run with, with this. And see, it's kind of a pretty clean looking setup, you know? Do a little sanding on these supports, but luckily, you know, the way I oriented the print, none of these are on any of the uh, facing parts. So I think we're in good shape. All right, some more parts have shown up for my transfer diesel project. As you can see, they've got their own dedicated cart now. So I want to replace these blind wheel sets, these floppers. I'll, I'll take this frame out to the layout and show you what I'm talking about, why I really hate these inboard uh, flangeless wheels. All right, so on my layout, I have fairly generous curves for being a three-railer. I've got 099 Atlas here and 090. And even though this is a, a long, rigid frame diesel, you'd think it wouldn't have that much hassle going around these curves. But the one thing I can't stand is as long as my truck is kind of leading into the curve, it's not too bad. You can see that blind wheel kind of stays on the rail. But this, if you see here, the rear truck that's kind of getting pushed along really steps out over the rail. And uh, it's even worse. Pull it. This is on the 090 curve. You can see how that wheel just walks right off there. That looks horrible. That's just terrible. It's not even rolling. It's just kind of getting dragged along. Anyway, you can see like the leading truck is all right, but the rear one really steps out and just, just flops around and looks goofy. So I discovered that on the powered unit on the last time I did these. And I was really kind of surprised how terribly they ran through the curves, you know, on my relatively wide curves for being a three railer. So, Let's get those uh, wheels swapped out. Of course, I did it the uh, most expensive and most laborious way. I got these dummy trucks from Bachman. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I placed the order for these, I couldn't cancel them. They're 20 bucks a piece. Um, I go and find, like, I find these wheels for, like, a buck a piece on eBay. And uh, I even found some, like, Rail King dummy trucks that would have been like half the price of this effort whatever i guess i'll have more scrap to sell off at a train show but i'm just gonna bop these wheels i'm gonna use them i can't return them anyway so it's just how it goes change these out all right this is my super high-tech setup for just bopping the wheels out that's all you really got to do Just a bit shade tree, but pretty effective. Oop. All right. Now all I gotta do is bop these guys out. Let's ruin some brand new trucks. Yeah, that was pretty brutal getting the second axle out. I mean, some of this stuff is pretty tough. Anyway, I'm just gonna do a very amateur re-gauging of these wheels. I got them started. They're not wobbling. I just gotta 
get them gauged close enough. It is just an idler wheel, basically. But man, this one, this is really tough. I almost need a cheater pipe on this little vise of mine. Not really set up to do blacksmithing down here, you know? All right. No more flapping around. Boy, this thing rolls like a dream. All right, so what's going on here is a rather experimental way of getting these safety stripes put on the pilot. And I thought about doing this with paint versus like decal stripes because I thought it might be easier. So I don't know yet. Um, I actually just screwed the frame to the edge of my workbench. And because I want this to match, this is how I'm doing it. So this is the only way I could think of doing this right now. So I'm going to run with this and see how far I get. Like I said, the challenge is to get the stripes to match the angle and the width of the original. So you see I have the, ma um, the masking tape will mask off what will be black eventually. So what will get painted will be white and I'll have to go back and repaint this black so I think the stripes are actually pretty closely lined up to the prototype but I'm using MTH's original stripes to uh, really figure it out I shot just a touch of reefer gray on there to give the uh, reefer white a fighting chance against the, uh, the black pilot here so see what happens. I'm going to get some paint on here and then tear this tape off and see if I was even close. I don't know. I don't think that's too terrible. I don't know what I did there, but, um, you know, some of the striping isn't perfect. I just tried to catch the general angle of this stuff. You know, I, I still got this gap I got to deal with since this is kind of a conversion from a swinging pilot model. Um, so obviously I'm going to go back and repaint what needs to be repainted here. And then they're going to get weathered when the model gets weathered. So if I have anything more to hide, I can get a little creative with my weathering. But I don't think this is too awful terrible. Um, I'm not like, uh, not like the biggest paint shop guy, you know? Um... I don't know. I got this Tamaya tape. I think worked out pretty good. Um, the idea with two was I could probably correct some of the minor stripe issues by hand. But I tried to match the width and the angle of these stripes. So... I'm going to assemble this and um, repair a couple of things, like a miss, the number board fell off the back there and I'm missing a, one of the uh, class light markers over here. I just gotta put it back in, but I wanna put this together and see how it sits on the layout. One feature I kept noticing on the uh, photos I was looking at was a uh, bell here at the uh, front end on the engineer side. So I just, I got a couple of them from PSC and uh, I just drilled and tapped a, an 080 hole through there and hung it. I don't know if the bell is quite the right size. Seems like it could be a little bigger, but at least it's there. And uh, I had some 080 hardware from some other project. I can't remember now, but I'll be sure to do this on the powered unit too. So after some screwing around, I decided to set my draft gear all the way back like, like you would normally want to. Um, I was trying to do it so the Katie trip pin would clear the little plow, but I just decided to heck with it. I'm going to cut the trip pin 
and I used my favorite tool in the shop here, these clines, and uh, I just drilled the hole back. If, if I was to do these again, um, I'd obviously give myself a little bit more of a shelf back here on this KD mount. As you can see, I was in some danger of encroaching on the uh, mounts for the body. So I was trying to keep this distance. You know, I wanted to fulfill the the depth of the stairs here or the uh, longitudinal depth of them. But also be respectful of my body mounts there. So anyway, I think that's how I'm going to mount the powered set too. <laughs> I think it looks good. Um, it looks fine there. Actually, if I was super slick, now that I've decided on the uh, draft gear location, I would have embedded the mounting holes into the print. So you can see, if I would have just stepped this out, just maybe three more millimeter, probably would have been fine. Anyway, that's kind of the stuff you think of as you're doing these projects. And just after you uh, complete a task, you're like, yeah, I could have done that a little better. So anyway, and you can see, you know, drilling these manually, I, I absolutely hate trying to do that. That's one of the advantages of the 3D printing is making these dimension parts. Um, at least you can pilot hole with a 3D print. So anyway, just something to think about. That's how, that's just how stuff goes. <laughs> look, at, look how off that was. Anyway, this even this pad didn't end up perfect, perfect, so I don't... Okay, one other thing I'd probably do a little differently on these pilots is to make these steps a separate piece. Probably not even in resin, maybe in PLA or, or brass even. Maybe just pilot some locating holes to do these in brass, because I did crack one. And luckily I got it back together with CA. I wasn't even sure... Um, the resin would glue back together, but it did, and it seems like it's it's on there. But that was kind of pushing it anyway, those being uh, printed as, as one mono piece, basically. Um, in the future, it'll be a testament to my train handling skills uh, to maintain the uh, integrity of these guys. So you can see it cracked pretty good. So I'm going to try to sand that down a little bit and maybe put a little putty on there. To hide my screw up so yeah I would probably do these as a separate piece that would kind of plug in to these pilots so I did have to open up these these holes a little bit too for the uh, for the uh, lift lever assembly I gotta put together that'll be next I figured I'd probably just do the stripes on these pilots for the powered unit now that it's set up. I even have the KD mount kind of pre-drilled. Like I said, I should have done that um, in the print, but I wasn't really decided about what I wanted to do about clearing the little plow there. So anyway, um, I need to make these stripes. And one of the reasons why I didn't do the do the stripes like using safety stripe decals on the other part on the uh other pilots um it can be a bear covering uh black painted surfaces with white decals so i decided probably the best way to do it was to manually tape it up and i came up this occurred to me after um trying to cut some of this to me a tape to width um, I found a piece of brass channel that matched the uh, stripe width and just kind of stuck some masking tape to it and then trimmed it with my X-Acto. And now I have perfectly cut with stri uh, masks, <laughs> masking tape, sorry. And uh, these are just like the little hacks you kind of come up with over the years and you and you go like, man, why didn't I think of that before? You know, instead of, you know, trying to, you can see some of these didn't come out perfect and they were wasteful. And uh, it's just, just how it goes, I guess, when you do these things. You know, I've been scratch building for quite a few years now. I would never claim to be an expert. 
um, and I think all of my layout efforts are studying that, you know? So um, anyway, I'm gonna try to do these, get them ready for the next project. I don't know when I'll get to the uh, powered units. It's kind of sitting over there. Not sure when I'll get to that. I wanna get this one done first. I gotta get it out of the shop. It's kind of driving me nuts. So we're back, this is how I'm gonna, <laughs> this is how I'm gonna do my striping. Kind of crazy looking, but I'll take this guy and I'll just clamp it there just to use these pilot stripes as a guide to uh, lay on my masks. So that's the basic idea. Using these pilot stripes as a guide, I can, I can kind of lay the, the tape across with the excess length and then just basically trim across there. I don't care about the excess there. So that's how it's going and I'm using one of my first ones is a guide just to kind of make sure I'm landing the uh, stripes where they need to be. By all means, not a perfect factory job, but it's going to be good enough, especially when I get into uh, weathering it all up and stuff. All right, I got a little pilot factory assembly line here going, and I've got my grab irons in. And as you can see on the print, you know, I, I got the grab iron mounts kind of molded in. And I'm making these cut levers, and they're okay. I, I, I'm just not that great at making these. I made this kind of half-assed fixture here to help out. But at least I'm not making, like, total pretzels. You know, I mean, if you look at the factory one, this is the MTH one I'm trying to keep intact because it's, it's too narrow anyway to fit. Um... It's just bent up wire. There's is a little, they got that last bend in there I didn't do on mine. I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead, but I, I had to, I had to get these certain width, you know, and at least uh, you can only see one end of the train at a time, so you won't know that there's slight variation on, on each of them. But anyway, once they're painted up, I think they'll be fine. All right, I've made all the, repairs I had to make and I got some masking done um, one of the number boards was off and one of the uh, class lights fell out so I used this um, sorry this plastruct bonding to uh, put these mounts back in worked really good I don't know one last thing about my cut levers um i went as far as to make a 3d printed template for trying to get the bends and stuff right but i don't know i think i'm just gonna quit while i'm ahead i think these are good enough i think once they're all painted up they're gonna look fine but um maybe i'll revisit this in a, another future diesel project now i have to uh do something about the hoses i gotta brake hoses i gotta cut them down a little bit mth had some shorty ones in there but i think i'm gonna have to customize some of these guys here all right so here it is on the layout and i don't know i i think the fit up is okay i think i'm definitely better than what i started with um i could have made this with a little bit more adjustability um, and I don't know. I could probably live with it on the other side. All right, so we're ready to do some weathering. I've got my uh, pilots kind of touched up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a pretty basic grime job. Probably just do uh, grimy black directly to the paint because it's it's got a pretty nice flat sheen as it is. Nothing too radical. Um, maybe a little brown on the trucks, a little grease and oil around the fuel tank, and finish it off with some dry brushing, and then. This can go get parked on the layout for a while while I decide what I want to do with the uh, 
powered unit. All right, so I have a pass of German Gray on it. Um, this is another German Gray experiment. I mostly like how it went on. I had to uh, thin it quite a bit for this project. I didn't really quite like the way it was laying down. This is direct over the factory paint, so I also almost forgot to uh, get some yellow on my steps here. And you can see I just used a little reefer yellow. Didn't do an awesome job because they are down by the dirt. And I'm going to run another passive uh, grime over them. All right, let's continue. All right, I guess here's the big reveal. A little bit anticlimactic, I know, because, uh, well, it's it's a dummy. So it's not like it can take off and do anything by itself around the layout. But I just wanted to show what goes into some of these three rail scale projects. And uh, when we get into the powered unit, hopefully some of my experiences will pay off during the course of this project. So so that's it. I kind of kept with the spirit of the project. You know, the, um, the pilots were kind of modeled after what MTH already did. And with the uh, benefit now of them being full width and fixed obviously with, with Katie mounts. And I did some minor repairs to the shell, reattached the number board, one of the class lights and, and all the uh, shell mounts, cleaned it up. Did a fairly standard we weathering job, you know, and uh, kept the uh, dynamic brake assemblies because I just felt it wasn't worth the hassle of removing those and filling not only the uh, holes in the top, there were four rectangular tab holes plus the clearance hole for the fan, but there were also some tabs on the side of the shell that these clip down over, so... To remove that would have been a lot of paint work and I just decided it really wasn't worth it on this project. So anyway, I hope you guys liked this and thought it was interesting and uh, hopefully soon I'll get into the powered unit. Um, there will be some decisions to be made on that one for uh, sound and control and uh, I'll have to do something about getting better power pickup on it. So till next time, we'll uh, see you.